All right, I'm gonna continue with this Project Euler here. We have lexicographic permutations for problem 24. A permutation is an ordered arrangement of objects. For example, 3124 is one possible permutation of the digits 1, 2, 3, and 4. If all of the permutations are listed numerically or alphabetically, we call it lexicographic order. The lexicographic permutations of 0, 1, and 2 are 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 1, 0. So ascending order here. What is the millionth lexicographic permutation of the digits 0 through 9? So pretty much we're getting um, the next higher value than our original value, but the smallest next higher value. So we want the smallest value that is greater than our starting value made up of the separate digits of our starting value. So that's what we're going to be doing. Smallest clear and concise algorithm, I guess, that I found that I can explain is what I'm going to go with. I'm not using, I'm not going to use um, the number they gave for this example. I'm going to use this just from getting random numbers and seeing what would make a good example. So the first step is what we're going to do is I'm going to say this is an array or a string and each one of these is going to be like a character in a string, say, or a number in an array. The first step I want to do is find the rightmost value larger than its previous value. So I'm, I'm going to also start at the end of the string and go toward the front. So if we start on two, I'm going to use, let's say we have an iterator through this. So in code, we're, we're just, uh, we'll call this I start at the end. So is two greater than its previous value? No, it's not greater than three. So we're going to go on. Go to three, is three greater than five? No, I'm going to go on. Five greater than seven? No. I'm going to decrement again. Is seven greater than six? Yes. So we'll have a saved off value here. Uh, if we're using i, seven will be i, six will be i minus one. So this value is greater than its previous value. So um, I won't lay this out in the code, but conceptually I'm gonna call this a sort of pivot value. I'm gonna call it p1 for pivot one. The six here, that's i minus one. First step, I'm finding the first pivot that we're gonna start with. And it is the value that is less than its next value. But we found that by getting the rightmost value greater than its previous value. So that's i greater than 6. Okay. So the second step here, I think we're going to have four steps in this algorithm, but the second step is going to be finding the rightmost value again, starting from the end of the string. But it needs to be the smallest value that is greater than our beginning pivot point here. So I want to start from the end of the string, find the smallest value bigger than 6. Go through it. I'm going to use another iterator. We'll call it j we'll just write this out here well if you have another iterator we'll call it j we're going to compare against this i minus one this pivot one value so it's two greater than six it is not i'm going to go on it's three greater than six it is not it's five greater than six is it is not is seven greater than six yes so seven will be where j ends up here if we put that in a code and seven will be we'll call it our second pivot value so call it p2 step two we're getting the rightmost element greater than the first pivot that is the smallest. So the smallest element greater than our pivot value. So that's our second pivot here. Not the best at explaining, that's all right. Our third step is what we're, what we're going to do is swap the pivot values. So P1 swaps with P2. So the result of that for this number will end up being uh, 1476. 5, 3, 2. This is still going to be i minus 1. This is still going to be i and j. And then step 4, what we're going to do is everything after the first pivot value, which is now p2, but we're not going to use p2 anymore, so I'm just going to call it p. It doesn't matter. Everything after this first pivot value here, after we swapped the two pivots, um, I'm going to sort. So I'm going to sort this sort of smaller, if you can think of it as an overall string, I'm going to sort this smaller substring. How am I going to sort these? I'm going to sort them in ascending order. How am I going to do that? I'm going to start with each end of the smaller substring here. So what I'm going to do is move and reset J to the end of the string, because I'm still going right to left, kind of. And I'm going to compare that against i here, which is where the smaller substring works. So as long as i is less than j, or as long as j is greater than i, 
So we'll just say as long as i is less than j for a condition, I'm going to swap these two ends of the substring. And then after I swap them, I'm going to increment or decrement. I'm going to move both ends towards each other, kind of going to squeeze it in. So I'll increment the left if we call it i, decrement the right if we call it j. So that'll move the 6 and the 2. After they're swapped, it'll be 2 and 6. We're going to move back in. So let me say this is sort of step 4. So for this one, it'll be two swaps. So I'm going to say 4a is going to be swapping the 2 and the 6. So the result of that will be 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 3, 6. And then if we increment i and decrement j, we will end up with i on the 5, j on the 3. We want to swap these. So the result of that, I'm going to call 4b will be 1, 4, 7, 2, 3, 5, 6. Okay, and then if we um, increment i or decrement j again, they will have crossed, and we don't want to swap anymore. Our, our comparison here is going to be false, so we will not keep going. So after we finished swapping those that substring value around to get it in ascending order, we will have found the next lexicographic permutation for our original number here. So this is the smallest number that is larger than this original number that is also made up of the same digits. Okay, number 24, lexicographic permutations. So I'm going to be using standard IO header to see some outputs. And I'm gonna use some, some portable integer types just so I can guarantee they're the same across you know multiple machines that I have. Okay, I'm not going to put anything into main today. We're just going to do this. So I'm going to need a few things. I used i and j in that example, so I'm going to use i and j. Um, they don't really need to be that big for this problem, so we're just going to make them unsigned 8-bit uh, ints here. So i, j, we're going to be swapping the two. Um, there's, you know, you could be fancy with your swap and use xor and not need a separate variable, but I'm going to use a separate one. I'll call it temp for a swap value. I could call it swap, I guess. But I'm going to call it temp. Okay, we need our actual string here, so I'm going to make an array. Uh, but I'm going to call it a string just to be confusing. <laughs> um, 0 through 9 is 10 digits. I'm just going to put a... I'm going to make it 11, though, so we can um, index the string or the array up to 10. I'll call it an array, I guess. Maybe that makes more sense. Call it an array, but it'll be 11 in, in length. But the actual value we're going to be using is going to be 10 digits. But the array I'm going to fill in. Okay, 0 through 9 starting off. I'm going to end it with a null just because it makes me feel better. You don't need this. You could do this. I just feel weird having an 11 length thing with only 10 elements in it initialized. So I put a null on the end to make me sleep better at night. But um, I'm, I'm using this with characters. It doesn't really matter. You could fill it with, you know, the separate values that are common to limited or whatnot. I do it with characters just because I can print it out and not have to convert anything. And since the, the ASCII standard, or the Unicode standard as well, the first 127 characters, these are guaranteed to be in linear order. Sorry, I need a zero there <laughs> for the problem. These are guaranteed to be in linear order, so if we do direct comparisons against the elements of this array as characters, as a string, then it'll still work out, you know. The character 0 is less than the character 1, is less than the character 2, so on. So comparisons are still going to work. Um, we can just save a length variable. I can make it a constant, or I can define it. We'll just make it define it. I'll say length 10. It's going to be the length of our string or our array that we're using for this. So I'm going to use an overall loop here to go through. We want to get the 1 millionth. Um... Yeah, the one millionth lexicographic permutation. So one million fits into a 32-bit number, not a 16. The smallest value you can fit it in is 32-bit. So I'm going to use that. Uh, I'll just call it count, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Call it permutation. Uh, I'm going to call it count. So we'll have count. I'm going to start at one. And I'm going to go until a million. Or 999999, but I'll go until million. So 
So the first thing, first thing I want to do here is find, um, again, the first step, the rightmost value that is greater than its previous um, element. I guess rightmost element greater than its previous, I should use consistent names here. So the rightmost element that is greater than its previous element. Okay, so I'm going to use another for loop for this. So starting at the end of the string will be length minus one. So because if we did length and reference the array from that, we would have something that, you know, is not really going to be valid here. We want to start at the nine, go right to left. So I want to do it while i is greater than zero. Little, little, uh, you know, sea golf here. I'm going to do it while the array value, the previous one, is greater than the one we're currently comparing against for i. I'm going to decrement. So I can make this an empty loop and do it on one line to be fancy. Just, you know, because I can. <laughs> but if we do this, we're comparing the previous value to the current one as long as i is greater than zero. So we don't want to compare, we don't want to underflow, so we're going to stop when i is here, for example. But we're going to see if th this value of i is this greater than the previous value. So for this case it is, the 9 is greater than 8, so we'll immediately go on. But if we didn't, and it was like, um, this was 8 and this was 9, then we would decrement i and check again, and then it would be true. So, But this is the starting string, but okay. So we'll find our first pivot there, we'll say. This will be um, i minus 1 will be the first pivot. So after that, for the second step, I want to find the, uh, I'm going to call it the smallest rightmost element that is greater than the first pivot. Okay, and this will be the second pivot, or the new pivot, or whatever you want to say. This one we're going to use J. So again, starting right to left, J is going to be initialized to the end of the string. So generally, we probably want to do J greater than zero as well, though you don't really need to put this check here. For this problem, I'll just put it here to make me sleep better at night. We'll have J greater than zero. So to get to get to the value that to get to a value that is greater than our first pivot, we can check where um, the array index j is less than or equal to the pivot, and then we can increment past that. So as long as that's less than or equal to i minus 1, which is where our first pivot value is, then we're going to decrement j. Just say it's an empty loop by just doing that. Um, you can also put this on a separate line. Maybe that reads better, but I put it on a one line because I like doing C golf. So this says... You know, as long as we're we're past the beginning of the string because we don't want to underflow, get out of bounds or anything. No segment faults today. As long as the array element is less than or equal to our first pivot value, we want to, we want to keep going back. If this was, say, 798, and the first i was here, first i minus 1 was here, then we would start, and the, the value greater than this for the pivot would be the 8. So that's what we're finding j here. So it's a little confusing on the first... Uh, first example here because this doesn't make a great example, but that's what we're finding for the second pivot. The third step, we're going to swap the two pivots. So I'm going to set temp. Temp equal to the first one, which is at i minus 1. Um, sorry, I, ca I called it a string in my when I previously did it, so I got muscle memory. Uh, but temp will be the first one on the second pivot. Is that j? So it'll be the second one. This will be i minus 1. No, oh, sorry. i minus 1 will be j. Yeah. I remember how to swap values, I swear. All right. And then j will be the temp. So the good old basic swapping two values. Okay, so that was the third step I went over. So the fourth step in this will be um, reversing, or I'll say sorting the substring or subarray. This will be sorting the, the substring or subarray to the right of the first uh, pivot position. Or well, if, if we swap the values, I guess it'd be the second pivot, but the position that we originally got the first one 
we're going to have that substring to the right that we want to sort in, a, I'll say, an ascending order. So sort it by swapping both ends of the substring, then I'm going to say squeezing the ends until they meet or cross. Okay, that's when we'll end it. So how do we do this? We can have one more for loop because everyone loves their for loops. So I'm going to reset J here just so I don't have to make another variable to the end of our, uh, our string, our array here. So while I is less than J or while J is greater than I, so J is going to be the, the right side of the substring, I is going to be the left side. Since I minus one position was the original pivot, we'll have I saved as the left point of the substring to the right of the pivot of I minus one. So it makes it a little easy here. So as long as that's to the left of, of J, I want to swap the values. So as long as we do that, um, we're going to swap, but after we swap, I can increment the left side and decrement the right to kind of squeeze the ends in together. Okay, so to do this swapping, again, we're going to do similar swap as above, but we're going to use i and j this time. I'm going to set temp equal to array i. Array i is going to be array j. And array j is going to equal temp. So not too bad. And that is all we have to do. That will find the next lexicographic permutation from our original string. And then it'll keep going with the new string since it's sorted within the array. I guess what they call that, sorting in place. And we're going to keep getting the next permutation until we reach number 1 million. Or, well, we'll reach 999999. Since it's zero based, it'll be the millionth permutation. But after we do this, we've gotten it. After we do it a million times. So I'm just going to do uh, put string array. You could do printf, but put string is less stuff to type, so it makes it more concise to type out. And that is our whole problem. So that's not too bad. So I'm going to save it. I'll do a... That was Control-Z. There we go. So I'll run clang on that thing we just did. It was good. I'll run time because it doesn't really take that much. 0.02. So that's pretty good, right? That was at 20 milliseconds then, right? That's, that's pretty good. So 0.02 second time. And we get our final answer here, 278.1546.0. And that is indeed the answer, 278.391546.0. I don't think I said that right. 278.391546.0. So that's our answer. So it's really, it's not too bad without white space and gratuitous comments everywhere. Good old FG. This will be, uh, you know, under 30 lines of code. This is... 35 lines, you know, with comments and white space and stuff. So it's pretty short. It's pretty good. But that is the whole problem there. It's really not too bad. Sort of simple-ish algorithm. Here's the a bad example in paint where I have to work on my mouse handwriting, right? We want to find the rightmost value bigger than the value to its left as a first pivot point. Then we want to find the smallest value or element bigger than the first pivot point to the right of that first pivot point for a second pivot we want to swap those two and then we want to sort uh, the rest of the number or array or substring we want to sort it in ascending order after the beginning pivot sort of position to get the next lexicographic permutation which for these numbers and digits that is the smallest value that is bigger than the value that uses the same digits in that value. The next one would be problem 25, the 1000 digit Fibonacci number. So sounds Fibonacci-licious. We'll get to that eventually. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you on the next one.